I kept trying and failing to write number of novels. And then this one came along and took forever, it took like 11 years. Um, but, uh, you know, it was the one novel I stuck with it. No matter how many times I threw out, I would go back to the garbage can, pull it out and start again. I had a character. My narrator was the alter ego. There's a, his Oscar's friend in the book, Junior. But it's easy to get that all confused because, um, you know, there's a lot going on in the book. And in some ways, it's also uh, pretty straightforward. Um, I kind of, uh, again, like I mentioned before, I grew up surrounded by nerds. I was a big old nerd. And, uh, but I was in a family where that wasn't really kind of like the normal, you know, Dominican immigrant family. My father was like a, a military dude and, you know, very, very kind of, uh, the kind of the patriarchy was full out in him. And, um, I learned how to, you know, I learned how to fit in, in that world. And, uh, there was a lot of friends of mine who were nerdy who couldn't fit in that gap between someone like me who could pass sort of, uh, you know, for normal and uh, those who couldn't spark the novel because I, I really wanted to write about these nerdy Dominican kids who don't fit into any of the formulas. There's so many formulas for who we are and what we are, you know? Um, and so, you know, it was a, it was a good stuff um, for, when it finished. <laughs> During the 11 years when I was writing it, I was going fucking crazy. My friends are a lot less pain in the asses than this character, you know, and it just, He's a tough dude to write. He's a very tough dude to write. He doesn't come out easily after I kind of chisel my way out of it. So, you know, um, but again, listen, it's, it's I think that it's an important thing to stress that just because you find something hard, I say this all the time, doesn't mean that you don't have talent in it. You know, the sort of the effortless writer, the writer who's like, you know, they're a natural, cool, that's a bag. And people who can do that are, Got to tell you, they're really lucky. Um, I find writing incredibly difficult. I have to chisel it out of me. And I often wonder how many talents we lose because we've convinced people that unless something comes easy, you don't have talent in it. Um, or unless you're fucking the blessed Harry Potter, you know, the chosen one, you don't have talent in it. And I, I think I, I'm, I'm sort of a poster child for just because it is really hard for you to do doesn't mean you're not doing it very well and you know it's not a, that's that's not said enough oh my god i have to tell you i love writing families um you know again never easy but i think the family unit uh you know it's like i can't remember who said it, it was a winston churchill somebody had a quote um you know about capitalism being the worst system in the world uh, besides all the other ones you know, family is sort of similar. Family is the worst system in the world besides all the other ones. Um, there's so much that can go wrong inside of families and does go wrong. And yet, you know, when, when the world turns upside down, there's nothing quite like a family. Um, you know, it's not for everyone. It's, I'm not saying these are all families. You don't want to generalize, but just as a system on the average, right? When you find yourself incredibly ill, there is a, a bigger chance that your family is going to provide some care than say your friends. Now, of course, there's plenty of people with friends who could do that. But in general, I, I'm interested in that. I'm interested in how um, families is often the worst system besides all the others. And, um, and having grown up in a very tightly knit immigrant Dominican family, I got to see the whole thing up close, what was great about it and what was miserable about it. So and that became in some ways that became what I am interested in uh, attempt to gesture at what I thought my very tiny community that I grew up in. It's not a tiny community, but my community was a tiny part of this larger what that gesture at what that sounded like gesture at the sort of linguistic complexity, um, you know, the kind of uh, texture of language where I grew up and I was just gesturing towards it. You can't really ever fully capture it, but uh, it was something that I began to work on almost immediately. Um, from the moment I started writing, I had to kind of figure out how I can keep English and Spanish um, on a page, how I could sort of generate a useful synthesis. In a Dominican folklore context, there's a fuku, which is a type of a curse. Um, uh, it's like a, our Dominican version of the jinx, but has, uh, um, I think, deeper and more menacing 
uh, possibilities. Um, one of the things about the Fuku is that um, there's also a connection with um, Christopher Columbus, the idea that uh, in parts of the Dominican Republic, you wouldn't even say Christopher Columbus's name because that was its own Fuku. And so I kind of created this sense that, that, you know, that the, that there is an active curse power alive in the Caribbean and that it came to be because of um, imperial colonization, because of enslavement, that that is a way that we can understand the trauma, the, the stain that is left behind by these historical uh, atrocities. And sort of uh, the Fuku um, in the book becomes this story that's told about this one family, that's this one family, right? Um, the De Leon family, the family of my, my protagonists, that they had gotten cursed. And this curse was following them across the generations. And so I kind of wanted to talk about how the curse is viewed both in the Dominican Republic and how it may play out and not play out in an American context. And it just was, for me, a lot of fun. I actually, Fuku was something that was floating around in the Dominican folkloric. So I, I'd always wanted to do something with it. But also look, I mean, the one thing about growing up an immigrant in the United States, the first lesson you learn about the United States is that the United States views itself as the blessed country. So if you view yourself as a blessed country, that opens up the possibility that there's cursed countries. And even more frightening is what if the quote unquote blessed country was in fact part of a cursed enterprise. And all of that was of great interest to me. You know, the way that the curse um, is both highly individualistic, right? Here's a family that's cursed, but is also at a national level. You know, all the curses you find in the Bible, you find in the great texts of antiquity, right, tend to be both, you know, uh, a curse that impacts an individual person, but that has a larger sort of connection to the nation or to the history. So it was a useful way for me to knit my two kind of thing, my two interests, the larger national question of the United States, the Dominican Republic of immigration, and then some of the more intimate, um, you know, uh, we would say, private personal moments only thing that came easily one day i was i was living in mexico city in those days 1999 and that title just jumped out of a conversation i was having with some friends uh these filmmakers the alcachofas as they were known and um you know the brief wondrous life of oscar wilde just came out and that was it you know uh, one of my friends at the time you know, couldn't really say Oscar Wilde and pronounced him Oscar Wilde and kind of a Spanish accent. And that just just settled in my brain and I couldn't get rid of it.